Hello, everyone. In this final short fencing lecture, we're going to discuss the infill components, which in the case of the F2 detail is the, y, the fence mesh and the tie wires that tie the fence mesh to the cable. As I mentioned in the previous lecture, we're not going to dive into the actual capacity of the 5 16th cable um, that ties this whole component together. Uh, because from our perspective at this point, engineering judgment will tell us that uh, given the magnitude of the loads that we're experiencing for a, the guardrail, the, the cable is not going to be what fails. <clears throat> so we can go into first the, a quick uh, revisit of the loads that we're going to experience. And as you remember, there is a tributary width um, component and the height of the post uh, above the approach ramp that is having the infill components attached to it. To find our demand, we are going to take that height times tributary width to get a tributary area, and that tributary area times uh, that 15 PSF load, area load from the code, is going to give us our load that we'll use for our wire mesh, which we'll, just, we'll uh, dive into first. And we're going to assume all of this area load is going to be transferred into tension on the wire mesh fence fabric. So we can find details about uh, zinc coated fence, fence fabric um, with the ASTM 392-11A standard that I have attached below. And what that gives us is our nominal capacity. It's going to be 850 uh, pounds force. So we'll take that 850 pounds, we'll compare it to our PA from above, and we'll use a factor of 1.5, a factor of safety of 1.5, and we'll make sure that that check passes. Now moving on to our tie wires, the details specify four millimeters at 25 centimeter uh, spacing. So First, we're going to go and find the diameter of that wire. So the diameter of a four mil millimeter wire we'll take as AW. And then using the ASTM standard 853 for tie wires, um, for steel tie wires, we'll take the 75,000 PSI value it gives um, times our area of the wire to get a 1460 pound capacity. Now, to find the force on the tie wires themselves, we are going to take the greater of 15 PSF times our tributary area, or 50 pounds. Now, using the details, we find that our tributary area of wire between, uh, between cables is going to be the 50 centimeters times the 25 centimeter spacing in the worst case scenario. So you could do the math here to see what is going to govern. And once again, we'll take the um, nominal capacity divided by 1.5, uh, the level stress design, and we'll make sure that is greater than or equal to our uh, demand loading. And that sums up our check of the F2 detail. Um, I won't go into it in lectures here. Feel free to take it upon yourself um, to check the F1 or the wood detail. You now have all the tools to do this. Everything is going to be similar as far as loads and embedment goes. Um, what will be slightly different is the dead load because we have a different material, but we're going to make sure to use the NDS when we're checking the posts and the rails um, uh, capacity, uh, internal capacity of the, of the material of the section. Um, remember to use the NDS for that instead of using the ISC um, like we did in the previous lectures for the F2 detail. And as you may remember from previous lectures, we went through the uh, process of using the NDS for a, the timber decking and the timber cross beam. So uh, take a stab at using the NDS to um, check a post. 